address that. So we did a second study. Um, in this study, what we did is we took people who had never meditated before, and we put them in the scanner, and then we put them through an eight-week meditation-based stress reduction program where they were told to meditate every day for 30 to 40 minutes. And then we scanned them again at the end of the eight weeks, and this is what we found. So what you see is that um, several areas became larger. In this slide, we can see the hippocampus. Um, and in the graph, the controls are in blue and the uh, meditation subjects are in red. And what we see is that um, the hippocampus, and this is an area that's important for learning and memory. It's also important for emotion regulation. And um, what's interesting is there's less gray matter in this region in people who have depression and PTSD. Another region we identified was the temporal parietal junction, which is here above your ear. And it's important for perspective taking and empathy and compassion. And again, these are both functions which people report changing when they start practicing meditation and yoga. Another region we identified was the amygdala. And the amygdala is the fight or flight part of your brain. And here, we actually found a decrease in gray matter. And what was interesting was that the change in gray matter was correlated with the change in stress. So the more stress reduction people reported, the smaller the amygdala became. And this was really interesting um, because it's sort of the opposite and parallel of what some uh, animal studies have shown. So Chatterjee and uh, colleagues using rodents, um, they took rodents who were just happy, normal rodents, and they had them in their cage, and they measured their amygdala, and then they put them through a 10-day stress regimen. And at the end of the 10 days, they measured their amygdala, and this exact same analogous part of their rat brain grew. So we found a decrease in st with stress, they found an increase with stress. What was interesting is that then they left the animals alone, and three weeks later, they went back and tested them again. And three weeks later, that same part of the amygdala was still large, and the animals, even though they were in their original cages where they were happy, were still acting stressed out. So they you know, were cowering in the corner, and they just weren't exploring the space the way they had before. Um, and so this is the exact opposite of what we saw with the humans, because with the humans, nothing has changed with their environment. They still had their stressful jobs, all the difficult people in their lives are still being difficult, and the economy still sucked, but yet, you know, their amygdala got smaller and they were reporting less stress. And so together, these really showed that the change in the amygdala, it's not responding to the change in the environment, but rather it's representing the change in the people's re uh, reaction and relationship to their environment. Um, and then the other thing that the study shows us is that um, it's also, it wasn't just that people were saying, oh, I feel better, or um, that it was a placebo response, or that they were trying to please us, that there was an actual neurobiological reason why they were saying they felt less stressed. And so the idea that I'd like to share with all of you today is that meditation can literally change your brain. Thank you.